Shabani, if you could just explain to our listeners, because there's a lot of call for that now that Section 154 and the presidential task team is cause for concern. Now, I want you to just explain to our listeners why hasn't those two interventions worked in a Tikwini? When I interviewed a couple of officials who are involved in those task teams, as well as, uh, you know, Section 154, Mike being a former city manager, indications are that they more advisory bodies rather than uh, forcing change or implementing change. So, Tabani, maybe you want to comment that why hasn't those two interventions worked? Is it just a diagnostic report and a recommendation? And if the officials don't want to carry out, out, it's a waste of time. And then why the call for Section 139? I explain the different forms of 139. Oh, thank you. Maybe before I, I, I go straight to what you are raising, may I just uh, respond to one or two things that were raised? Yes, uh, do so, earlier. do so, Tabani. Uh, just by way of background, when we um, assumed office in 2021 after local government elections, the DA at Chaguini committed that we are going to be an opposition that is offering solutions. We're not just going to be an opposition just for the sake of it. Uh, we kept that promise where there were issues that needed to be raised. We rose those issues uh, sharply and made sure that those issues are resolved. But of course, uh, with more than 20 uh, political parties in the Tewin alone, uh, that was always going to be chaotic. But we are committed to making sure that we offer solutions where solutions uh, are needed. And uh, of course, I think we really has covered this uh, perfectly. There must exist a, a relationship, uh, a working relationship at local level now between your civic bodies, your Red Pairs Association, and us as public representatives. Because in some instances, you find a, a situation where it's like we are opponents, when in fact, we are supposed to work for uh, one and the same cause, because we are all rooted there at what level, at regional level. So I think we, we must emphasize the fact that active citizenry is going to be the answer in working with us as politicians to make sure that service delivery uh, is achieved to the people. With regards to service delivery, we must never underestimate the impact of uh, cater deployment. Uh, we are talking about very senior people uh, suspended here in Etewin. Uh, they are sitting at home, uh, earning money while sitting at home. But the reason for that is that there hasn't been consequence management in Etewin for years now, because you had officials who are supposed to be working in, in administration, but because they are political connected, they know that whatever they do, they have that political uh, protection than they do as they, as they wish. That is why some of them are suspended now. Uh, I'm not going to mention names, but some of them are suspended because of infighting, political infighting, but some are suspended because they needed to be suspended. With regards to Section 154 and the presidential task team, you see, you're quite correct. Uh, the intervention, these interventions, at as they are now, they are nothing but support and advisory. Uh, advice is something that you can take or not take, which is why we said from the beginning that we, even though we welcome especially the intervention by the province, but we don't believe that this is enough because at the moment that it does not need just advice, it needs proper intervention, which is why we said at least you must through uh, section 139 have an administrator who's going to a neutral administrator, not a political employee, because we also have that problem in, it, in, in case of 10, that you have administrators who are just political employees of a particular faction within a particular uh, political party. It does show that uh, Section 139 intervention doesn't always work. If you look at them, Sundozi, they've been under administration for more than five years. Is there an improvement? No. If you look at um, Pofana, Umtuba Tuba, that, that about eight, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken in, it, in, in case of 10 alone, that are under administration. But is there any improvement? No. Because those are not neutral, hardworking administrators, are political employees of a particular faction of a particular uh, political party. But what we are saying with the GNU in place now, if there has to be an intervention through Section 139, we must get expert, preferably from outside KZN. Because if you have people from outside your province that are not interested in the pro provincial politics, these are people who are coming to fix the mess that exists in the So we are calling for that and that there must be proper administration in the Tewini to make sure those that are meant to do what they are employed to do are held to account if they don't do what they are, they, they are employed to do. The different aspect of 139, in the main, there is an aspect where you are just instructed to fix one, two, three. Uh, if that doesn't work, then they send an administrator, uh, 
as, as I said, if we've had municipalities here under administration for more than five years. If that doesn't work, then uh, the municipality dissolves and it goes back to fresh elections. Those are the different aspects. Where we are in it, we do believe that if you don't dissolve, at least there must be an administrator that is going to oversee the affairs of the city. The manifestos of the parties were not properly designed uh, to improve service delivery. Because if you look at when democracy crept in um, and subsequently the ANC won a clear majority in the Tequeni, um, they appointed officials to sort out the imbalances of the past. So the manifesto was clear that go and work in these areas and improve service delivery that hasn't been taking place during the apartheid era. For example, in Chesterville, there was very, very little or no housing. Mm. So the mandate was human settlements, go and start constructing houses to uh, respond to the demands of the people out there. In Phoenix, there was rental housing, go out there and go and sort out the problem of ownership there because that's what the councillors were demanding. Now, the irony of it all is that Chesterville was ANC, Phoenix was predominantly DA, <laughs> Glenwood was predominantly DA because John Steen Hazen met me several times when I was there and he says we got issues there with the flats. Amlazi, predominantly ANC stroke IFP, those councillors were demanding human settlements. Um, Shlanga, Councillor Deboer came in there and he says, listen, why are you bringing Konubia at our doorstep? And we explained to him that there's a shortage of land. Hewlett's have land. We've got to do different types of housing to respond to the opportunities that people want. It meant that the disadvantaged areas had more service delivery over a 10 or 15 year period, but that was required. Now we're in a situation where, as you rightly said, as Ernest is saying, as Rama is saying, as Willie is saying, these cadre deployments do not represent the ANC. They were greedy employees that came in there like opportunists. They got those positions, they stuck, and they embarrassed the political parties. So your concluding comments is, how are we going to make fundamental changes to ensure that your personnel, Hassan said that also, uh, you know, are sorted out to improve service delivery? Because you're a member of Exco. I know that the 2026 elections might change the whole outlook of Etekweni. Currently, in the last municipal elections, ANC got about 45% or whatever, and you needed the smaller parties to give them the majority. A lot of those guys are MK boys in the ANC, which obviously there's no by-elections, but that can change 2026. The DA may improve, may not improve, smaller parties may come in and what have you. But currently, Hassan said, if you don't get it right, GNU may fail. Provincial of National Unity may fail. Shilabisa, who's talking now, NFP may switch the other way and he might be out of a position. So how do you see it as an ex-co member to improve a Tikweni without going into administration? Because Hassan mentioned administration too is not working. Your concluding comments, uh, Tabani. Thank you. I think uh, to answer a question about people who might have been opportunists and were able to worm their way into the ANC system and took advantage of that, I think where that system failed uh, was when there was no consequence management against those that were underperforming. Uh, it was well and good to make sure that uh, you sort of address the imbalances of the past, but there must be checks and balances to say, whilst you are there for that purpose, but you are also there to serve the people. Correct. I think that's where the system failed. In terms of where to from now, I think even though here in Etiwini, we don't have a, a formal uh, working arrangement uh, with, with the ANC. But I think uh, with the um, government of national unity, the government of provincial unity, you are starting to see some degree of improvement because the environment and the atmosphere, the political atmosphere has changed drastically. Uh, one of the panelists here did allude to the fact that uh, when the GNU started, there were notable improvements in service delivery. And that is true. Uh, to recall that uh, when the GNU one was put in place immediately after that, or just before that, uh, the mayor was replaced. And uh, credit to the new mayor because um, Kandela Klaba is a man that consults with other political parties. Of course, we are different political parties. We're always going to have uh, disagreements. But for now, the environment decides that we are able to cooperate with each other in the interest of the people. You found the impact in Exco when he chairs the meeting and how he talks. He that, gives everybody else a confidence, unlike the other mayor that may have just been, uh, you know, uh, guided by his political mandate. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. That has now leveled the playing ground in that as, as executive committee members, we are not necessarily there now to 
take a party line. We are there in unison trying to make sure that we prioritize the interests of the people because we all appreciate and realize the rot and the collapse that is here uh, in the table that's okay. going to take a uh, united effort to try and resolve some of these issues. But lastly, from me, again, I want to extend an, inv an invitation uh, to all of us. Uh, politicians, public representatives are not going to succeed in doing this alone. Mm -hmm. uh, we need active citizenry. We need uh, red peers associ associations. But I must appeal to those bodies to remain apolitical. Mm. Uh, resist the temptation of some of us in, in, in political circles to try and put you in our pockets. Because if you align yourselves as uh, civic bodies with political parties, uh, you are then unable to hold all of us accountable. Because the first people, even before our own political parties, who must hold us accountable are these civic bodies, the Red Pairs Association. We are accountable to them because they come there on the ground where people are before we even account to our people. So I'm extending that invitation to say, as a DA in Etiagwini, we are more than welcome to work with uh, community structures because we understand that the task ahead is going to need a united uh, force for us to succeed. Thank you, Tabani. Some very important comments. So Tabani, you've got a lot of homework to do, but we will be on your toes going forward. Um, just on a closing note, we had a workshop that Rama was talking about with a whole lot of NPOs uh, a couple of months ago, and Gauteng has invited us, and they want us to talk on the same issues to give practical solutions to problems rather than just making it a talk shop. So today we, we spoke very important issues, and I must thank uh, our guest this evening, starting with Willie Ocamp. He was excellent. Uh, Ramona couldn't make it, so maybe next week we'll have it. Tabani, it's a pleasure having you in the studio once again. Thank you were you holding a very important position in Exco. Your voice can be heard, and I'm glad to hear that you're a part of a team so that you can improve the performance of the team like Liverpool and not Man U. <laughs> right. And 